This week we're talking about diversity in tech, the thing you've heard so much about but hasn't really changed. Now, it's not really a secret that Silicon Valley and technology is not incredibly diverse. The trope of the young white male engineer is not something that came from nothing. It's not really a whole cloth creation. Happily now, today, we have more data available to us. Many tech companies now report their internal diversity stats every single year. So companies like Apple and Facebook report their progress to us on a very regular basis. Now, disclosure is good. But the data itself is usually a bit sad. Now, for example, at Facebook, and I'm not trying to pick on them, according to the company's own 2015 report, only 2% of its US employees are black, and only 1% of its technical employees are black. Now at Google, again, not picking on this specifically, 3% of its employees are Hispanic, and in technical roles, that number falls to just 2%. In the discussion about diversity, there has been a large focus on technical talent, while non-technical roles tend to be more diverse and get less focus and less emphasis. Now, there are many skills needed to build a product, so I'm very curious. Are we being a bit short-sighted? To tell us if our focus is correct, we have Melanie Arujo right here in the studio. Melanie Arujo is the founder of Front and Center, an organization founded to increase diversity in Silicon Valley through design. She has a degree in behavioral neuroscience, which combined with her decade of practical design experience, she uses to educate and help create career opportunities through the inclusion of underrepresented minority groups. Please welcome to the program, Melanie Arujo. Melanie, my friend. Hello, how are you? Fantastic, thank you for coming in. Now, why is the focus in diversity, when we talk about it in tech, mm -hmm. only focused on engineering talent and not other roles? Well, I think a lot of the reason why it's only focusing on engineering talents is because when you look at some of the largest companies out there, they were originally started by engineers. But technology is at a level of sophistication now, and the consumer wants more. Now, design's coming. Uh, to, is, is in demand. I, I disagree a little bit because back when Apple was just starting off, when mm -hmm. the Apple II came out, it was noted for its design. I mean, they, right. they had jobs back then, even in those days, really pushing on, on, on both form and function. Mm -hmm. So is this a new phenomenon or more a continuance of a past uh, ideal? I think it's a more of a continuance okay. of what happened. Um, so I think the right now, the demand for design is, you know, it's really around people who can design products that are easy to understand, you know, um, in terms of usability. And so forth. I mean, right, but does, does that really break down based on who uses it, or is that more of a pan-human thing? Do you, do you build for a certain group or people or category? Or do no, you, you build, build for, for people. Okay. You build for everyone, right? right? And so everyone have, has different interpretation of how they should use their products. Right. I mean, when you, I've been on product teams before, and when you ship a product, you have no idea of how the consumer is going to receive it or how they're going to use it. It might be completely different from um, the, your intention, but how they, for example, like let's take Vine, right? Sure. And the way how it's Six been adopted. Six seconds fail, I call it. But yeah, <laughs> Six, yeah, but the way how it's been adopted amongst um, young people of color, for example, do it for the Vine. No one could take that copying messaging. No, you, know, you, you couldn't predict that out. Right, you okay. couldn't predict but it. But Vine's part of Twitter, mm -hmm. and um, you know, a, lo a lot of large companies release this diversity data on a regular basis now. Yep. Are you seeing companies really focus on design as a method to become more diverse? Or are they more focused on hiring more engineers that are diverse? No, they're engineers. trying to diverse the engineering team. And, and more, fo they're focused on that one niche. They're focusing on that one niche. And you can see that with the um, large amount of coding boot camps available right now. There's boot camps for, for women, minorities, really all sorts all of... All focused around engineering. No one's focusing on design. Well, you are, but... Except me. Yeah, you're, right. You're the one. Yes. We found you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and so I think if you take people with naturally creative skills, people who have a natural sense of aesthetic and you continue to, you recognize those skills, that's the first part. It's, it's creating the opportunities to recognize that there are skills yes. that can help advance your um, company, but also um, really investing in the success of diverse people who are naturally creative. Okay, now I appreciate all that and I agree with it entirely, yeah. but for, we agree on, on diversity as an important thing. Yes. I, I think we, we share this as, as a philosophical bent. Right. But a lot of people out there um, don't understand why this is a very important thing. So if you, could you, if you could, mm -hmm. uh, explain briefly why diversity in product and design and even engineering actually matters and improves the result? Well, it's so interesting. I mean, I don't, I think I've, I've heard a lot of arguments for diversity as a business case, but I think diversity to me is really forming um, a positive, like forming a quality human connection, right? Okay. So if you have people that just look the same working on, you know, they have one point of view and working on this product and they think that their point of view is diverse enough, right. but it does, but you're not really incorporating the different experiences and the lessons that people from diverse communities bring to your product. So if you have one 
background in general. You mm -hmm. have one perspective and you have one product, but that's not the entire continuum. That's not enough. Experience. That's not okay. enough. And so you're hoping that this one perspective is going to um, be adopted by the mass. And that's not the case. But when you bring in a whole bunch of different point of views and you look at the problem from different um, angles, sure. what happens is you create a product that's much more valuable, much more meaningful for the end user. And that end user doesn't necessarily have to be white. They could be black, Latino, of course, Filipino, course. whatever. Everybody. Now, um, before I let you go, in, in five years, there's been so much talk about this issue of the last year. It's mm -hmm. been fantastic. It's finally got the the attention deserves, but in five years, how much progress will we have made inside of technology on design and engineering and even non roles like that? Will it be better or will it be kind of where we are today? Oh man, that's such a great question. I think for gender um, diversity, it will certainly be better. Okay. Okay. But for racial diversity, that's going to be a lot harder to crack because right now, if you look at the current way that we educate people of color, they're not, are they really going to get to that skill set where these tech companies are willing to hire them? And that's really where we need to be focusing on when we're talking about racial diversity. Okay, we'll keep working. We'll have you <laughs> back in a few years, and we'll see where we're at. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for coming in. Awesome. Thank you. Bullish airs every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, and you can find it here on TechCrunch.com.